Hello, I'm Mary. You can tell from my accent if I'm from Cork and I was diagnosed with NETS in 2012. Hi, I'm Owen. I'm Mary's husband and we're both members of the NET Patient Network Committee and the support group. And we'd like to talk to you today about the services that are provided in Cork and elsewhere around the country. Here in Cork, Mary's care is overseen by a team of professionals who are experts in NETS disease. I work in the Mercy University Hospital. Uh, this is where our neuroendocrine tumour multidisciplinary team meeting is for the region, for the South Southwestern Hospital Group region, which serves approximately a million people. About 25% of neuroendocrine tumours in the country are diagnosed in this region, and the hospitals would be in Cork City and County, in Kerry, in Waterford, and Southern Tipperary. So all of these hospitals with diagnosis of a neuroendocrine tumour are referred into our multidisciplinary team meeting, where we discuss the cases, we record the outcomes, we communicate the outcomes and we decide on the management and that, may ma that management may be surgery, it may be observation, it may be drug treatment at home or it may be drug treatment overseas and for complex cases we link in with the multidisciplinary team in the National Centre in St Vincent's Hospital. Patients uh, come uh, from a variety of different referrals, sometimes uh, uh, colleagues within the hospital, sometimes uh, consultant colleagues uh, from other hospitals. Uh, sometimes uh, GP referrals, uh, something has been found on a CT scan uh, which is abnormal or an ultrasound scan and that needs to be investigated further. So uh, patients come from a number of different sources like that. Uh, probably the biggest referral base would be from other consultants. Um, the type of patients that I would see uh, are predominantly patients with neuroendocrine tumours of the pancreas, the small bowel and indeed the appendix. In fact, um, I just uh, a few weeks ago got a phone call from a rather distressed consultant surgeon who had operated uh, on um, a young child uh, with a, an acute appendicitis uh, and had removed the appendix successfully. The child had recovered completely and the pathology report came back showing uh, a small appendicular uh, neuroendocrine neoplasm in the tip of the appendix. Of course, the child was cured and there was no issue for concern, but the surgeon obviously was worried you know, how he would break the news to the family, uh, how this uh, child needed to be followed up, was there any significance to this at all? So that would be kind of a, a, a fairly typical uh, uh, interaction. So I suppose a typical patient with neuroendocrine tumour is hard to describe because it's such a complex disease. We could have people with something as simple as they've had an appendix removed and there's an incidental discovery of a carcinoid tumour in the appendix. They've had the appendix removed and that's all that needs to be done. Then we can have more complex patients who by complete fluke, they've had scans done for other reasons like gallstones for example, or abdominal pain, or even back pain, and they're discovered to have multiple areas of concern in the liver, thickening of the bowel, disease in the abdominal cavity, and a biopsy has shown this to be a non-functioning neuroendocrine tumour. So it's not making hormones, it's been there for years, there's an awful lot of disease, it's a complete fluke of a discovery, completely coincidental discovery, and the management of these patients can be very complex. Surgery, drug treatment and so on. I started here 13 years ago uh, and had an interest in NETS at that time and obviously started attracting patients as a consequence as people learned that I, I had an interest in this. And as the unit has grown and as we've become much more of a multidisciplinary team, we've obviously attracted much more patients in. But I, I'm seeing a fairly steady stream of neuroendocrine patients now. They come in, in different forms, as I said. Some patients are not even operated on. Um, there's an observation period there, or they're treated, first of all, with other forms of treatment. That, of course, is always discussed at a multidisciplinary team meeting together with several other colleagues. But uh, we, we would operate uh, on, on a, a few patients every month, that's how I would put it. Sometimes that's liver, sometimes that's pancreas, sometimes that's small intestine, and sometimes it comes uh, just in the last two, three weeks, as it happened. We've operated on four or five patients with neuroendocrine tumours, and then there may be nothing uh, for another six, six, eight week period. This wouldn't be unique to neuroendocrine tumours, this would be reflective of many solid and liquid tumours around the world. The more you see, the more specific disease types you see, the better you get at it. I'm sure you wouldn't want to be treated by a doctor who would see two a year. You want to be treated by a doctor who would see 22 a year, 40 a year. You want to get expert opinions overseas on people who see hundreds a year. So since we have tried to centralise the management of neuroendocrine tumours in the country in three main regions, there is no question that our ability to diagnose it, to treat it, to manage it, and the outcomes for patients improve. I think there are several challenges, I suppose number one, from a scientific 
from a medical and biology point of view, it's really fascinating. How a disease can have huge volume in your body and have no symptoms, how could that be? Or have a disease that's very small in the body and can have huge symptoms, like a carcinoid syndrome. And the many different specialties that link in, like endocrinology, cardiology, gastroenterology, etc. So from that point of view, it's absolutely fascinating. And also because the prevalence of the disease is so high, and thankfully the case fatality ratio is very favorable in terms of numbers of cases, you get to know people very, very well for many, many years, many years. So you get to know their spouses, you get to know their children, you even get to know relatives and their lives. You get to know them very well. So I think even from an emotional and a personal point of view, that's incredibly rewarding. Of course, the downside of that is some patients will do very badly. It can be incredibly upsetting and you can have an emotional bond with patients which inevitably will take the toll on a doctor if you're a compassionate, empathic doctor, which I hope I am. So that's very challenging as well. So this is why I like neuroendocrine tumours because unlike other cancers, all of these things play into it. We've had uh, really the, the creme de la creme of international speakers come speaking on various different cancers. We had in 2011 uh, the, uh, a meeting here on neuroendocrine tumours. Mick uh, is one of the patients who makes use of the services in Cork. Well, I was diagnosed um, 11 years ago now, and uh, initially they, they didn't know what it was, and uh, um, fortunately it turned out to be a neuroendocrine uh, illness rather than... It was, I had... Um, my primary was in the bowel and I had secondaries in um, my liver and various other places so it looked like curtains at the start. I go to the Mercy Hospital and uh, I think Derek Power is in charge of the, uh, even though I go to, I'm still under Seamus O'Reilly oncologist, there's an oncology nurse there who's very familiar with NETS. She's, like, for example, <coughs> they brought in in the Mercy, which I thought was a very good idea, they brought in um, blood sugar testing because sometimes you can get uh, disorientation from the or fainting from the from the octreotide treatment, which I thought was so. They monitor your sh your your blood sugars as well. Um, I, I, I'm very pleased with the situation. Liz is from West Limerick. She was only recently diagnosed, and she is now receiving care in Cork. I just found, I suppose, in three, they never said it was net cancer. So when they mention the word cancer and liver, you automatically think I'm doomed here, and that fear. And it was when I came to Cork on the Monday and I met Chris Thor on the Tuesday, it was like a blanket was put around you because it was a case of this is what you have, very treatable, completely put me at ease. So I feel very comfortable in Cork and I've had my surgery of five weeks on, everything has happened so fast compared to listening to other people that seem to have, could be take two, three years to be diagnosed. I was diagnosed within a week. So. I'm very happy with Cork and I couldn't talk highly enough of the care I've gotten and the tests. I've been very fortunate like, I've been waiting for nothing. And even yesterday the um, dietitian rang me and the next day I go up, the um, dietitian especially for cancer is going to meet me the next day. Do you know, and I didn't have to ring or ask any, they rang me telling me this is available and you know, do you want to be a part of it? So I think it's brilliant like, do you know, I've had, I've been very lucky like. I've had all these people, you know, just kind of fall, fall into my lap. I didn't have to go looking, like hearing some people there, you know, or talking to other people there today. They haven't been as fortunate with their diagnosis or who they're under, like. So, yeah, I think we've just been very fortunate as well, like. They keep telling me if, if the thing, if the scans are negative, that there are further treatments and I'd feel comfortable with doing them here. And there's always the option of, the, uh, I think most options are, are open to us now, th th basically. Obviously there's nothing lucky about having a net, obviously, but the Irish government have been very supportive, I think, in, in paying it for neuroendocrine tumours. I've yet to come across one patient in eight and a half years um, who've been referred by the appropriate people for PRT who've had the funding declined for this disease. I think when you're told, first of all, what you have, and you think, oh my God, will I be around in six months time? And then they tell you this is, you can live for years with this. It's very treatable, very normal lifestyle. You see the brighter side. You have to, you know, look at the positive side of it. Like, every, somebody gets something, you know, along the way. Like, I have friends, you know, I have a friend living with severe diabetic. I'm living with this, but she's on treatment every day of the week, right? It's diabetic, but that can cause serious problems too, diabetic can. So the way I look at it is, I have this, she has diabetes.
but it can be treated. So I look at it. There are other centres too, including the one in Galway, where Greg Leonard and Marcia Bell supervise the care of NETS patients. All the centres, like the one we have in Cork here, are in constant contact with the Centre of Excellence in Dublin. We hope this short video has given you some idea of how the services are improving and developing in Ireland for patients like Mary.